I have been teaching on the subject, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And many religious organizations are guilty of that accusation. They hijack Christianity, telling people that they are the ones that God has chosen to be the light of the world. They become entrenched in their own self-righteousness and in their own teachings. They reject the teachings of the Bible. They reject the teachings of the way of how to get saved. Thus they become deceived. They become victims of the scripture that says, In the last days there shall be perilous times, for men shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. But how about the Christians who come from such religious organizations? How long does it take for them to be free of the debris of their former religion? Many Christians bring the debris of their former religious teachings with them into their Christianity. Thus they struggle for years in trying to serve God instead of becoming set free through the power of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many depend on their own works for self-righteousness. Today I want to teach on the subject, do you understand who you are in Christ? Do you know where you stand with God? Have you made your calling and election sure? If this is not the case in your life, then you are a lot of times being bombarded with Satan's lies. But before we get into this subject today, we will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that you will open the hearts of them that are listening and receive the truth. For Father, you have come to set the captives free. Lord, you will open the hearts of those who are seeking to follow you, Lord, so that they can rejoice in their Christian walk. I thank you, O oh God, for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. When one studies Christianity today, you can see the confusion that Satan has brought in amongst God's people. Many people, many Christians, distrust other Christians because of certain doctrines. It does, instead of the gospel uniting us together, there seems to be a division. We need to understand one thing, that we are made righteous by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, not some external law that we keep. And today I want to try to clarify on this. For we, the children of God, have become a separate people. We have become a new creation in Christ. We have been separated from the powers of darkness and have been translated into the kingdom of God. And a lot of Christians don't seem to fully understand that. They, they are not sure of their salvation. They are not sure of their walk with Christ because of the different teachings out there. The Bible teaches us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, Wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Very interesting statement. He tells us if you make your election sure, if you know where you stand with Christ, you will never fall. Then he also tells us to make our calling sure. Walk in the pathways that God has chosen for us. I've had, I read a very interesting uh, story the other day. The Lord God will prompt somebody. With, he will prompt a person to walk in a certain way. Make a decision, to make a decision to walk in God's will. 
And after the promptings of God, don't register to that person. Then he will create a crisis in that person's life. Then the person will make a decision for or against. And I've seen places where people have made the decision against. After years of bondage, they're still wondering why God is not working in their lives. They do not trust to step forward in the purpose, in the divine purpose of God for their life. They believe in what somebody else tells them what to do. Make your calling and election sure. Step out for God in faith. And you will find out what joyful Christian living is. The Bible teaches us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, that we have been made partakers of a divine nature. What does that mean? We have become one with the Lord Jesus Christ. His nature has been imparted into us. We can then start seeking the Lord Jesus for direction. He will call us in a pathway that he has chosen for every individual to follow. You don't need to listen to somebody else. You have that divine nature. You are now connected to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Once that divine nature has been implanted into your heart. You have become a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Forget about the past. The past sins, whatever you have done, have been placed under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been cleansed with the only antidote that is available for sin. And that antidote is the blood of Jesus. After you have, re uh, after you have re received that divine na nature, which is the nature of God, you then are a purchased possession. You are Christ. You have been uh, interplanted into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have become one with God. Very interesting. If you study uh, John chapter 17, read that chapter, how the Lord Jesus Christ says, they in us as we are in one, we have become intertwined with God. The very nature of God now flows through our minds. The Bible teaches us that we have received the mind of Christ. Thus, we will reign throughout eternity with God, fully assured that we are one with God, never more to depart from God, never more to depart from that eternal security that is ours. A lot of people try to say that we still have a choice of leaving God. Why would you leave yourself if you have become one with God? You cannot. You have become one with Him. How will you leave Him? This may sound foreign to some ears, but study the scripture carefully and you will understand that you have become the bride of Christ and God used that terminology. Why? Because when here on earth somebody gets married to somebody, the two become one. They are not two anymore. They are one. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, it tells us, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, how does one purify his soul? How does one's soul become pure and holy in the sight of God? Verse 23 tells us very clearly, By being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Then some will get caught up in the idea 
that we have to strive for righteousness. We have to reach forward to the prize of the high calling of God. Thus they exert themselves, believing that this scripture means that we have to attain a certain type of holiness. I want to show you those scriptures. They're found in Philippians chapter 3. It tells us very clearly in verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind and reaching forward, forth unto these things which are before. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Many people will study these scriptures and say, yes, you see, Paul did the same thing. He was urging us on to press forward to the price, the mark of the high calling, to attain the holiness that God has. But I want to take you one little verse further. It tells us very clear, uh, clearly in verse 15 of Philippians chapter 3. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Very interesting. He is telling us we are perfect. But once we are perfected in Christ Jesus, once we have become a new creation, let's not sit back. Let's reach forward and try to attain a standing with God that will be unshakable, regardless what wind of doctrine or what tribulation will come across our path. Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ has a very interesting gift for those who turn to Jesus for salvation. It is the gift of knowing Scripture. The Bible teaches us in, um, in many places that if we study, we shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Free from what? A lot of times, free from ourselves, free from every wind of doctrine that comes, free from being afraid of losing our salvation, free to follow Christ the way he leads us and not the way somebody else tells us to walk. Yes, freedom in Jesus is the ultimate price that the scripture promises us to them that study the word. I want to assure you, Christ wants the best from us. He will not lead us into a place that we will be ashamed of. Yes, we have to step forward. For it, you cannot steer a vehicle that is not moving. If we do not take a step for Christ, He cannot steer us. Even if we walk a bit in the wrong direction, our Lord Jesus Christ will steer us back on the right path. If we are honest with ourselves and God, he will steer us in the direction where he wants to go. The Bible is very clear on that subject. If we ask God for a fish, will he give us a scorpion? You can touch all types of subjects in the Bible where it comes to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, the gifts of healings, assurance of salvation, regardless what it is, business in this world, going out on a business venture, if you seek the face of God, the Lord will lead you. But most of all, I want to admonish you today, those of you who are listening, reach out to you, to your neighbor, to those who are around you, who don't know of this amazing grace which Jesus presents to all the world, the mercy and the grace that he gives to humanity to redeem them from hell. For a person is lost in trespasses and sin. The inherited sin nature that we have received from Adam is there. All humanity is destined for the lake of fire and Jesus is reaching out to them, 
calling them out of the of the forces of darkness, of the world of darkness. He wants to bring them into the light of his dear son. And this is our duty to perform. For the Lord God has made us ambassadors of Christ. He has given us the, the principal mes message of reconciliation. He wants us to reach out to God. And he tells us there's going to be a judgment seat of Christ. And we are still going to be judged according to the things that we have done in the flesh. Were we faithful servants? Did we reach out to the lost? Or were we self-centered? Or did we neglect to free ourselves from the, the clutches of sin by neglecting to read and studying and having a, re a relationship with our Jesus, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we then will receive whatever God has for us. So I'm asking you today, have you made the decision to walk after God, to seek after the God, to reach out to Him, to trust Him, and to faithfully follow Him. The choice is yours. The Lord will open your heart to that revelation and make you a blessing. Amen.